the Chris and James Lesson Show. Woo! And we're here tonight to go over Activates. Stellar card song. Old uh, song, too. Fairly old song. I don't... Uh, I, w I wasn't listening to it when it came out, so I don't know when it when it actually know. debuted. Let me show you. Um, my guess would be... I'm thinking 2003. 2000. I'm thinking 2004, so... So anyway, what we want to do tonight is just go over a couple little parts that we do. Um, how we orchestrate it. Now, when we do this song, we have me and you on yep. electric, and we have a bass player, and we have a drummer. And um, I've done this song before without you yep. as a single guitarist, and you, you can arrange it that way. Um, just makes it better having a second guitarist because it's a little more full. Hey, two guitars um, are better than one. They always are because there's always more guitar parts to learn. Unless, of course, you're a clap, and then you know you don't need anybody. No. <laughs> um, so we'd like to go over a couple of the key features that we play. Now, on this one, I generally open with yep. the lead line, which is a fairly simple line. It's just kind of chordal right here, um, kind of around the B shape. It's around this B shape here and um, moves across like these moving triads here. And uh, you're on the, uh, what would that be? We're on the uh, fourth, fourth, fret. fourth fret here, and uh, just follow along on my hands as you can see that. So there's just that little pull off. Um, so uh, I'm not going to count out every note. Uh, that's it's pretty easy to be able to look at that and, and guess and tell. It's not a very difficult part. Um, but that part uh, comes in during the intro. Yep. <clears throat> Um, not necessarily through all the turnarounds and interludes. Um, there are a lot of uh, other lead parts in this that we don't do, just because I think when I learned it, I just wasn't able to play that good. Yeah. I don't think I've ever even tried it since then, so I don't know, I, I don't know if I can't play it or Yeah, not. I've tried it once, um, and I, it's that idea of like, I'm not the guitar player, so it's like, yeah. you, you try and learn it, yeah, well, it, it you might, may not. It might be a shorter scale yeah. PRS kind of thing. Yeah, too, definitely. But, um, but yeah, those parts, uh, we don't cover them when we do it, uh, but you generally can. I mean, you can you can YouTube it on somebody else's channel or watch you know the guy playing it from And find a good one. Yeah. Good um, but uh, that part that I play for the intro, we play during the turnaround break. So when we get a pause after the first verse, mm -hmm. I cover over that for another measure as we shift into yeah. verse two. And and the that bridge between well not the bridge, the the interlude, it's essentially the uh, intro, but instead of playing, you know, going up the G sharp, you're just doing the B, the F sharp, the E back to the F sharp. And All right. And yeah. so, Chris, like I was saying, that intro chord is in the shape of B, uh -huh. because this song is in the key of B. Yep. Can you show us what the just basic power chords are that we're using for the verses? Yes. Yeah. So, the verse, um, depending on what you want to do, and depending on how I feel, depends on how I play it, um, the verse is just G, G sharp minor, F sharp, um, B, and then the C sharp. So if you want, you just power chord through it, or if you want to add a little flavor, a little spice, what I do sometimes is I use, um, I'm drawing a blank now, uh, octaves. octaves, there we go, Oct see this is why I have him. Um, you can use an octave and what you do is you just do the, so it's, Because I'm sitting down, I'm playing it different. Usually when I play it, it's more of a... But as long as you get that, you can do yeah. that, which spices it up a little bit. And it's, you know, all a matter of what uh, your skills are and yeah. what your taste is and how it is. But I think doing it that way is a little bit closer to how the artist Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot more percussive uh, chugging yep. um, and alternate picking kind of in there. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, I prefer to do it that way because it's kind of more more the line of the music. So yeah, we've definitely. covered the intro and we've covered the uh, the verse, the verse and the turnarounds a little bit. So, well, on the turnarounds, it's fairly easy. You come in to E, F, E, and F, and then you're into the chorus. So I mean, 
that's pretty pretty straightforward yep. and there's no lead parts that I've done through that and yeah. I there really isn't in the song either it's just uh, just straight power chords from those guys yep. um, so why don't we go over the chorus yep. chords as well so the chorus again simple it's pretty much uh, your intro you know it's <laughs> In between when I was holding out, that's when you can play. So it's just, it's your B, then your F sharp, your G sharp, your E, then your B, your F sharp, and then your E. But when you hit that last D, you kind of want to do a, add a little percussiveness to it. Um, so it's essentially yeah. your intro, really. I mean, intro and the chorus are same notes. Yeah, slightly different, but um, and these are all these are all fairly yeah. simple power chords that anybody can look up on the internet. Yeah. I, I don't think we need to go into looking at directly what you're playing, but no. why don't we uh, why don't we do a quick run through yeah. of just the chorus progression just to give the sound of it? Um, since I'm playing a little bit more straight up than yep. you are, you might be doing a little bit more feeling parts. Yeah. So okay. Uh... <laughs> basically the format of the artist because yep. it's not like a worship song where you kind of drag it out or change it for the audience it's kind of it's just kind of a fun song to do yeah so when we do it it goes uh, same as the artist goes verse one chorus verse two chorus uh, now when we come out of the chorus there is a little bit of work on it um, after you hit that E and it holds out for the two measures or whatever it is that little bit of a pause uh, you go to the C sharp. Um, I like to hit the whole C sharp minor uh, when I when I get into that, just because it gets my fingers in the right spot, and it, it kind of carries out and it sounds good with it. So um, as we come out of that chorus, you hit C sharp minor, and then you you wait the measure, and then there's a run from uh, from seven to five to four. Three uh, to two, and then back up. So it sounds like this. Um, so, like I said, I, I hit that C sharp minor, hit that C sharp minor, and then run right up on one fret. Boom, 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 boom. Everyone. And then uh, after <clears throat> after the lyrics start to come back in at the end of that. You, you pedal a little bit on the E, yeah. and then that falls right back into the chorus. Yeah, and you I mean, essentially, all the progressions from there. if you have two guitar players, if one player is doing that run, the other guitar player, your rhythm guitar player, he's just holding. <laughs> it's literally C sharp minor to the E. And I mean, I... He likes to go the low E, so I do that high E, so you get that nice flavor again. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing too, now that I think about it, when you're playing the chorus and stuff like that, um, good rule of thumb, don't necessarily fight against each other, fill in the space. So, you know, generally your guitar, like, we're generally in sync a lot when we're playing and strumming, um, but if you have someone who's, you know, their, say, overdrives, distortions are a little heavier, yeah. You can fill in that space with even, you know, like octaves, um, yeah. which, you know, that kind of falls into that, holding that C sharp for that little bit of a turnaround because you're filling that empty space. Yeah. And I think uh, it's safe to say that most of this song, being more heavy rock and roll, is, is a lot easier to fill out with, yeah. you know, muted 
chords and, and sustained chords and just hanging on notes that yeah. are uh, in the in the key of where you're at on the song. Yeah. So um, I think it's pretty easy to fill in with multiple guitars, uh, and that's that's what we do. Um, now after <clears throat> after that bridge point where you're coming off the C sharp minor, everyone. Da, 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 da. Um, when it comes back into uh, Activate, you go through a uh, musical interlude where the artist will do the, uh, the solo that he has written. Um, we don't do it, it, like I said, it was, it was too hard for me when I had learned the song. Um, but they, uh, they run through the course progression, which is what we play. We just play the power chords. Um, he does the, uh, the run. There's a real high run up the neck, yeah. um, and then you drop back into E, and it just it kind of fades. It's a little bit of a drum solo. Everybody is, is hanging on E and just like letting it sustain and fade out. Uh, and then there's a little run on top of that. Uh, and I generally try to do that with the bassist. Yeah. We try to do a similar thing, and um, the the notes for that would be uh, so that would be um, open open on the E and then on the two, the four, the five, seven, and the nine. Um, so that's the run up as you get to the very end of that before you break right back in. So once you hit that run back into the B for the for the chorus of the final end of the song um, and then that chorus depends on how long you want to run it I think yeah. we only usually run it twice but uh, the artist I think does it a little bit more yeah um, yeah I think they because they do the chorus I think twice then they do an instrumental they do the chorus one more time and I think they do an instrumental okay. twice so essentially they're probably I think Stellar Cart does that whole run of the same notes about six times, give or take, yeah. I think. Um, and, and depending on how picky you are, you can listen to the listen to the track and do, oh, yeah. do exactly like they yeah. want, or you can change or do whatever. We we usually don't hang it out for that long no. uh, when we when we perform it just because that's kinda how we fell into the groove of doing it. So yeah. that's and, just our excuse. And I mean we also use it more at least for us, <laughs> we use this more as like a get up and go song like right at the beginning so sometimes those get up and go songs you like them but you it's, also want to keep them short yeah too, you because, steal a little bit from them yeah to use them and abuse them yeah and i mean and as as far as that goes when they do that like um after that interlude um usually what i do because i like simple i mean I if don't. you if <laughs> I, I like simple because if you talk to a lot of like the old guitarists, you know, they like simple, you know, it's don't make things more complicated than need to be. So when they do that solo, I'm literally, because the song's in B, I'm literally hanging on to the B, you know, your uh, second string. Why don't you do, show us that, show us the part that you did because we, like I said, we don't do the solo the yeah. way Stellar Card does just because we never, we never practice yeah. it that way. Um, but do some of the fill-in stuff that yeah. you've created just because we needed something yeah. there. And I mean, like I said, I like simple because, you know, to me, simple is nice. Sometimes, sometimes sure. is, you know, I, if I want, if I want crazy, I'd be pedals. But I mean, what I do is I just do that B. That's your B. That's your root. The whole song's based around B. And I literally just do those whole step, half step stuff. So like, when that hits and, and you have that instrumental, it's just... So that's like the first half. So it's literally B, uh, C sharp, to a D sharp, to now you're at... Yeah, to an E. Um, so you know it's open. So zero, two, four, five, seven, nine, and then the twelve. Literally, whole step, half step, you know, stuff like that. And then usually what I do is when that stuff drops out and it's just the drums, I like to add a little flavor to it. Uh, again, 
I don't know why I'm. I'm, I'm well, why don't we do flavor. a Why don't we do a run through yeah. just so that people can hear that and they can decide whether they like that or whether it's something they don't want to yeah. do and they want to match a little closer to the artist. Yeah, thing. and I mean the artist does it in B too. So like when they're they're up in, I think the 14, 15 frets up in there. So if you want to do a solo, build it around B. <laughs> something that you kind of like or if it inspires you to do something like that. And I, I do my idea. I do my sad pathetic 80s wannabe like triplets you know it's just a B yeah. it literally is just you know open B four five seven I just always think of ACDC when you play that. Yeah that's that like I, I said don't know that, if that's who you ripped it off from but that's who I think of when you I play just it. probably Probably <laughs> subconsciously. Subconsciously, I mean, we always get inspired by people, and we're like, "I want to be him," and they're like, "Ah, oh, we can't be him." <laughs> so we're back. Yeah, we're back now. Everything kind of failed on us. Yeah, the memory cards all went full. Yeah, so, the uh, gremlins of technology do not like us for our first introductory video, but yeah. that's okay because we will defeat them. So we hope you enjoyed this. We hope that you uh, get something out of it. You can uh, take this as a starting point to learn this song and. Uh, Try it out on your own, see how you do, see how you want to run it. Definitely. So, this is James and Chris signing off. We'll see you later. See you later.